is welcome. So you purchased this course probably because you're interested in being, uh, being a digital nomad, you know, kind of traveling the world and doing your own thing, maybe making money from abroad, not having to be in the United States the whole time. So where do you, where do you choose to be, right? That's kind of like always the first question. Like, look at this huge world where you can be in Thailand with great internet. You can be in the Philippines with still fairly stable internet. You can move all the way to Australia or you can just stay in the United States. Um, you can just go from the high cost of living area on the West Coast to the Midwest or further to the Northeast. Um, or you can travel down South into Southern America and be able to create something fantastic for yourself, a way for you to have some sort of an income that isn't tied to where you where you are living right now. For example, you don't have to go in person. You don't have to go to a clinic. You don't have to suffer being in a hospital taking call. So I will start this off by saying that many of you may be interested in just being a digital nomad and like, no, it's important that I am a nomad and I can travel from country to country and I can make my money wherever I am. Fine. That is, that is a perfectly valid option. But don't forget that you could also go back to the U.S. for three months out of the year, pick up a locums gig or find a hospital or go back to your clinic and work for three months, maybe a bit of a, maybe a little bit more than a full-time schedule, 40, 50 hours a week, make a good chunk of money, 40, $50,000, and then take that and travel abroad. One of the first things that I think a lot of physicians have a hard time understanding is that the cost of living in other countries is incredibly low. Uh, what, what you're spending right now to have the kind of lifestyle that with which you can actually go to other country, uh, go to, go to work, have a car, have health insurance, have uh, have disability insurance, and all that stuff. All those things require so much money on your part. You have to have so much income to be able to do that. When you look at uh, cities like San Diego, right, um, the cost of living in San Diego is astronomical, and we forget that. We think like, oh, it's really not that bad. Like you know, like. I've been living here. I've been doing a thing. Uh, it says for a family of four, estimated monthly costs are three thousand um, eight hundred. Uh, yeah, three thousand eight hundred dollars. Now, obviously, that is absolutely not true. We know that a family of four living in San Diego is not spending four thousand dollars a month. They're spending closer to eight thousand dollars a month. Um, but I can understand how these things are going to be inaccurate, right? These cost of living cal calculators can be inaccurate for certain places. But remember, you're a physician, so you're living in the city and you got student loans and you got all these other expenses that you have to, that, that, that you need to pay for. You have a car, you have a high quality car so that it's reliable to get to work. You have all these insurance contracts, you're eating healthier food, you're helping out family. All of these costs are adding up. And at the same time, when you move abroad, all of a sudden, your cost of living drops quite a lot. Why? Because the average person in in a city like San Diego is going to be paid probably about eighty thousand, ninety thousand dollars. That's just one person. Dual family income is usually over over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, close to two hundred thousand dollars for the average San Diegan. And when you go to a city um, like Mexico City, when you go to Madrid, Spain, when you go to any, when you go to Turkey, to Istanbul, the average person is probably getting paid around 800, 900 euros or 900, maybe a thousand dollars a month. So all of a sudden, the amount of money that you have can go really, really far. If you live like a local, if you try to live like an American visiting these countries, of course, your cost of living is going to be higher because you're going to go to uh, English breakfast places and you're going to get like, you know, uh, third wave coffee and you might purchase clothes from Zara uh, instead of, you know, purchasing it from uh, from the local stores. And so, uh, of course, your your cost is uh, going to be considerably higher. So in this in, in this practice. I really want to take you through the entire process of leaving the U.S. and how do you do it? Well, the first thing you got to do is tell your employer, hey, I need to go. You can, of course, agree on something. You can say, hey, can I take a six-month leave? Oftentimes, when you ask for a leave, they secure your position. And so when you come back, you can just go back into it. You can also ask for a sabbatical. And so this is a great way to ensure that when you come back, you still have a job, right? Um, so once you do that, you still have stuff. 
you have uh, debt and mortgage and all sorts of other stuff. The, the nicest thing is if you have a house and you have a mortgage and stuff, just rent it out. Chances are the rent is going to cover the mortgage perfectly fine. That's that's the case in most most U.S. places. If that's not possible and you have a rent and you can't get out of it, one, try to put an ad out. Tell the tell the landlord that you're going to put an ad out for your apartment, and if they find if if you find someone suitable, they will take over the rent. That's another perfectly easy thing that you can do. Uh, the alternative, of course, is that you ask them if they allow you to sublet, and then you will rent it out to someone. And oftentimes, you might be able to rent it out for even more than you got it for. Um, other logistical things to kind of consider is like, well, what country am I going to go in? What language am I going to speak? I, I would probably say if you're if you're doing this for the sake of an adventure, go go to a place where you don't know the language and just learn it. And there are wonderful uh, language schools and places where you can learn it. Italki uh, is one. I haven't uh, added that one on here, but it's it's a website that a lot of my friends have used to learn uh, different languages, like all sorts of languages. So you can go on Italki and they will teach you uh, any language you want, get you conversational, get you started, so that you can order food at a cafe or restaurant and like go to the grocery store and feel comfortable. The next thing is now that you figured out, okay, I'm gonna exit my work. What am I gonna do for income, and how am I gonna live? Well, you first gotta find a place to live, and so there are every like when you go to when you're in the US, you go to Zillow, you go to real, realtor.com. There's so many different websites where they have real estate listings. You can go on Reddit. Reddit is a wonderful place for you to ask questions of locals. And when you go to Reddit and you go to a subreddit like Mexico, then you can ask a question in Mexico. Hey guys, what website do you use to, um, search for real estate to search for apartments. Now they might recommend Facebook. So Facebook groups is very popular and somebody else might recommend uh, a particular website. For example, if you do the Spain one, people will say the best place to look is Idealista. Idealista is simple. Um, you can buy and you can rent. Now, some of you might be too afraid to buy. Totally okay. But if you're going to do this adventure of being a digital nomad, buying could be a lot cheaper in a lot of countries. You could buy places for 20, 30,000 euros, which is maybe like 30, 40, 50,000 US dollars, or you can do something as simple as uh, do, doing a long-term rent. And it doesn't have to be that complicated to rent a place in a place like Madrid. As long as you can show that you have an income, you can generally rent a place for uh, not, a, not a lot of money. Uh, you can Find some really nice places. These are usually three bedroom, four bedroom, two bedroom places for 750 uh, euros a month. And for about 1200, 1100, you can get, you know, much, much nicer space probably in the, uh, in the city center. But it's fair to say that for about 800 euros a month, you're always going to get a pretty nice spot. And 60 square meter is 700 square feet. So you, you won't be suffering. And so Idealista is a great place to go, and that's a good place to get started to look for what costs might be. Now, the other issue is you may not want to spend that much and you may not want to commit to a 12-month lease because that's what Madrid would ask for on Idealista. That's a long-term rental contract. You can ask for six months, and they usually will approve it. You probably won't get away with three months. So imagine I put in a different city. So here we are in Oviedo, which is the northern part of Spain, which is really beautiful, very green and well known for uh, just incredible hikes and very wonderful people, amazing food culture. And here you can see that these are entire apartments, by the way. Um, one bedrooms are going for somewhere around 600, 400, 800 uh, dollars a month. Um, and, you know, you can be a little bit further out uh, uh, you can be a little bit further out from the city center and of course get a house and get like, um, you know, a little bit of a farm uh, life or you could be closer to the water. It kind of depends on what it is that you're looking for. Uh, but this is sort of nice because you, um, for example, this one I put down for about uh, four months. So this is a, uh, is it? Uh, yeah, September, September 1st to February 1st. No, even more than that. So here you can see lots of different options coming up um, for many different prices, but um, it looks like for around, uh, yeah, under a thousand, you can definitely find a place. And of course, if you're willing to pay more, you get a nicer house and bigger space, you uh, would be able to uh, maybe ha travel with a significant other, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for. 
Another place is often things like Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. I don't have Facebook, but here in Spain, for example, everybody uses Wallapop. Wallapop is another place where you can look for uh, apartments for rent. You can, of course, look for cars and uh, other stuff, uh, other stuff that you need. But it's a great place <clears throat> to look for short term rentals um, and uh, even uh, sublets, uh, maybe a house uh, like a beautiful apartment in somebody's house, etc. Um, so those are kind of the ways I start thinking about like, where am I going to go? Where am I going to live? How much am I going to pay? Maybe for the first two or three months, you can use Airbnb and just get settled, find a place. And then after a while, believe me, when you're in a location long enough, you're going to meet people and they're going to help you figure out how and where to go. The next thing I kind of wanted to touch up on is the visa situation of wherever you're going to go. Now, honestly, the best place that I can tell you to go for something like this would be my website. I write a lot about the whole visa situation in different countries. I've uh, written about it uh, for Mexico and I've written about it for uh, Spain and a lot of other countries essentially all have the same thing. Portugal has it. Germany has it. If you want to stay in a place long enough, as long as, as long as you can show that you have some amount of money in your bank account, they will let you stay there long term, meaning you can get a one year visa, two year visa, whatever, uh, as long as you can show money and you don't have and you don't you don't work there as in it's not a work visa. So that's what I have. I have a non lucrative visa for Spain. So I get to stay here for one year at a time. And every time I renew, I get two more years and it's pretty easy to renew. You can do it with an attorney or you can do it on your own. Now, the other thing is, if you take a language school, most countries, if you are enrolled in a language school, uh, about two to three hours a day, you would get, you can apply for a student visa. And you can do this if you're 70, 90 years old. And you can do this, of course, if you're like 15 years old. So that's another great way for you to be able to move around. Now I'm jumping around topics a little bit because I'm just kind of thinking about the logistics and the perspective that I had when I first set out on this journey, kind of w wanted to look and see how much are home prices? How much am I going to pay? And then the other part was, or, you know, how am I going to learn the language? Uh, and what am, what am I going to do about banking? So uh, these days, you don't really need a bank. If you go to wise.com, you can open a uh, bank account quite easily. Um, basically, it's a virtual bank account. And with this bank account, you can send money to any currency. And within this bank account, you can hold, a mul hold multiple currencies. So if you want to be in London, you can hold, uh, hold British pounds. If you want to be in Spain, you can have euros and you can have liras uh, in uh, what is it, Turkey uh, and US dollars. And so the nice thing is if you need for example, some countries where you are, you actually need a local bank account and they may not let you open a bank account unless you're a resident. And so this is the solution. You just simply have one of these. And so that's going to solve all of your bank account needs. And then I know everybody asks about this, like health insurance. What do you do about health insurance? Health insurance. U.S. is the only country where people are obsessed about health insurance. So once you leave that, you don't have to worry about it. Now, if you leave the U.S., and you're like worried that I, I oh man, I, was, I still want to have health insurance in the U.S. Well, you could, st you might qualify for some, um, what is it, Obamacare benefits? What is it called? Affordable Care Act benefits. So basically, as long as you're not making any money, so if you can use this year to be <clears throat> a zero income year for you, for example, if you're just using your savings or cashing out 401ks, which we'll get into, then you don't have any income, so you actually qualify for one dollar a month health insurance. Of course, you have a copay, but if you're not going to be in the U.S., why have health insurance in the U.S.? Just purchase health insurance through uh, any private health insurance for any country that you go to. You're not going to pay more than 100 bucks a month and you're going to get full coverage. So Sanitas is the one for Spain. Sanitas also exists in Mexico. And for about 100 bucks a month, you're going to get full coverage private insurance. So and for honestly, most other things, most other countries, you can pay cash for everything, especially you being a physician, uh, being a rheumatologist that you are. It's going to be super easy for you to do that. Um, now, I'm always assuming that you are a practicing rheumatologist, that you still have an active medical license. If you don't, there are still ways to do this. And so that's kind of what the next uh, topics will be about. Um, so you, we just talked about kind of exiting, leaving, and what are you going to do with all your stuff? Uh, so obviously you can, uh, you know, put your stuff in storage or, and then your house, you can rent it and your insurance, you're going to cancel it and your car, you're going to lend it to a friend or you're going to put it in storage as well. Obviously, the best thing to do if you're going to take a couple of years is to just sell it and be done with it. You can always buy a new car when you come back. We talked about kind of living abroad, banking, 
and figuring out the cell phone situation, figuring out their health insurance situation. And then one other thing that always comes up with people is, okay, well, I'm going to be abroad. I'm going to be a digital nomad. And I want my customers to still be in the U.S., whether they're patients in doing telemedicine or they're, you know, uh, consulting customers. And so, well, what's going to be the issue with the time time zones and stuff? You can see over here that right now in the in California, it's about 8 a.m., but in Madrid, it's already 5 p.m. Well, is that, a, is that really a big deal? Technically, for me, no, because you can see here that the day is just started, uh, just starting. And uh, for me, I've had all, right now it is, uh, what time is it here? Um, it's 5 p.m. And um, I've had most of my day to myself doing all the things that I've really wanted to do. So I'm comfortable sitting down now and working for the next two to three hours and making some money. So for me, it'd be 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m., which would be 8, 9, 10, 11 a.m. for California. Now, if I don't want to do California, I can have East Coast-based time. So you can add another hour to this. So I could even start a little bit uh, earlier and uh, have clients in the uh, in the East Coast time zone. But I really wouldn't worry too much about that. I don't think it's as difficult. Um, we haven't talked about cell phones, but let's talk about cell phones. Cell phones are incredibly cheap. This is a uh, prepaid tarifa go prepago uh, prepago uh, pre in uh, uh, Orange, the, that's the name of the company, orange.es, and you can get cell phone service that's prepaid um, for four weeks at a time, and it's just 10 euros a month. So really simple, you get 25 gigabytes, guys. I mean, that's that's more than that's more than you'll ever need, and you just basically can just connect your cell phone through a hotspot to your phone, <clears throat> and you'll be able to have all the internet and access that you were looking for. Um, Language, again, kind of maybe going with a language school or doing italki, I think that's a great idea. And as far as making friends, I think that's always something I encourage. And I know people, it's on your mind, like, well, I'm going to go to this strange country and I'm not going to know people. It's not true. You're always going to find some transplants who have come to this country as same as you and they're trying to learn the language. Maybe they're working there remotely. Uh, this day and age, remote work is really popular. But meetup.com is a wonderful website for you to just get on and search for local meetups meetups of people together. You can go to the local library. There's usually some sort of meetups there. In most countries these days, there's WhatsApp groups. So everybody just creates WhatsApp groups. They go out together, they party together, they drink together, they go painting together, they go hiking together. In Spain, in my city, Santiago de Compostela, there is even groups for certain physicians, uh, and you're going to make physicians very physician friends very quickly, other rheumatologists, etc. Uh, but you're also going to be able to meet <clears throat> just a whole slew of different types of people. Um, so uh, I, I would think about it that way. I would think about about it from the perspective of like, I'm going to meet people. That's that's not the issue. The, issue, the question is, who do I want to hang out with and who do I not want to hang out with? Um, the next thing um, I wanted to mention to you as far as resources now, Craigslist is spreading throughout the world. So you might be able to find some international Craigslist listings. So you could try to, you could consider using that, but I still find Craigslist to be one of the best things for subletting your place out. So consider that. Uh, maybe you don't want to sublet your entire house out. You could always sublet out one of the rooms. And so that's why I wanted to have Craigslist as uh, one of the options for um, renting out your place. So as far as getting, once you're abroad and you're sort of thinking about how am I going to make some money? What are, what, what are my income opportunities, right? Everybody, everybody worries about this. Everybody worries about this absolutely rightfully so. But remember, if you're going to be in a country like Mexico or Spain or Greece or Italy, your cost of living will be really, really low. So what could you do? Well, one of the options is you could just cash out your 401k. I know that's a big no-no and everybody says you're going to die if you do it and you'll be broke and you'll be uh, you know, homeless. That's not true. A lot of people cash out their 401k for proper reasons. Imagine you have 150000 in your 401k and you decide to take $100,000 of this money out. So you can go to a payment calculator like the one on wellsfargo.com and you'll see that you'll pay a $10,000 early payment penalty, which is non-refundable. You might pay up to $20,000 for federal tax withholdings and then you might get, uh, pay some state tax <clears throat> withholdings as well. But that's not always the case. If you are taking this money out and you're not making any other money, it is possible that you may not have to pay any taxes at all. So you'll end up just paying this 10,000. And remember, your money has already gone up a little bit. 
So because your money has already gone up, you're probably not actually paying any of this 10% penalty. It's coming from the appreciation of the funds that you already have in your 401k. So if you do that, you cash out $100,000 at a time, you'll pay 22,000, but you'll walk away with 78. And $78,000 is the kind of money that's gonna serve you enough for three years living abroad. And that's the truth. And that's just assuming you're not gonna make any kind of money on the side. Alternatively, if you take the 78,000 uh, and imagine you're like, all right, well, maybe I won't just go ahead and spend it all. So I can use a dividend calculator <clears throat> and I can put in here, all right, let's see. So 78,000 and if I say calculate dividends, so assuming I'm um, invested in assuming that i'm invested in a fairly good dividend portfolio um, then i could expect to earn about fifteen thousand dollars a year so that's that's uh, over a thousand dollars a month of passive income now initially what i had put in here is two hundred thousand so if you have access to that kind of cash of course if you can cash out your 401k perhaps then you could get as much as well, unfortunately, it looks like they won't let me <laughs> continue. Uh, but basically, it comes out to about forty thousand dollars a year. I'm going to exit out of this uh, website, but you know, uh, forty thousand dollars a year is a solid amount of money that you would be able to earn and be able to live anywhere you want as long as you can take two hundred thousand dollars, invest it in a bunch of different dividend income stocks stocks that pay you a dividend every year and that could be up to six uh, percent a year of a total income from a portfolio uh, of course it depends uh, on the kind of portfolio that you have so that's one option for income obviously cashing out using your savings and all that stuff but maybe you just want to make money you're like you know i want to be able to make some money so there are many opportunities. You are a rheumatologist. And so what do rheumatologists do? Rheumatologists see patients who have rheumatologic diseases, but rheumatologists are also internal medicine doctors. So they can also see general practice uh, patients. You could from abroad just work on a platform like NERX where you are just prescribing birth control medication. So you can get credentialed with NERX while abroad. You can uh, prescribe rosacea treatment, acne treatment, birth control, mental health, genital herpes treatments. So it's incredible. There's a lot of things that you can do with your medical degree working abroad. You can work for a general telemedicine company like Teladoc, and that's perfectly fine. And uh, looks like my photo just changed. I have no idea why. <clears throat> but I like it. Um, and uh, what I like about something like Teladoc is that it's basic, simple, primary care telemedicine types, um, uh, urgent care type stuff. Somebody has a UTI, they have a little bit of a headache, they have some diarrhea, some uh, cold and flu symptoms, and you can just do a bit of telemedicine if you're comfortable with that. There are also websites like Just Answer. Just Answer is basically a website where you ask a question, to a medical expert and they provide you with an answer. So here I can find a gynecologist, a, a pediatrician, psychologist, a urologist, and I can post a question to them. And for a certain amount of money, they will answer my question. And uh, it's not a telemedicine practice. It's you're asking a medical expert about certain medical conditions. So I think it's another great way to sort of have some good income. For me, I always earn several thousand dollars a year doing this, and it's uh, rather straightforward and easy to do. <clears throat> so we talked about NERX, we talked about Teladoc, we talked about a website like Just Answer, and of course there's many different types of websites like Just Answer and like NERX and like Teladoc, but I'm just giving you examples. Now, one thing that I like about uh, these kind of things like Teladoc, um, uh, I'm sorry, about Upwork, so Upwork is a place where you sell your services, your time and your expertise. So Mohammed Ashouri um, is a health consultant, right? And you as a rheumatologist can be a healthcare consultant. So the way you would write it here is a rheumatologist, a rheumatology consultant or rheumatology consulting. And what you would do is you would put your location here. You would write about what you're interested in and what you do and what your knowledge and expertise in. 
And that's it. You then just wait for people either to reach out to you, or you can certainly go to find work and you would search for different opportunities uh, based on the kind of jobs that are out there. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, uh, so you might put in, uh, you might type in rheumatology, telemedicine, healthcare, medicine, all these different types of keywords that you can use that will then get you the right kind of clientele who would want to work with you. And I think that's a, a wonderful way for you to be able to make some income on the side. And now, of course, you're going to have to figure out what it is you're passionate about, what it is that you're interested in. But imagine that as a rheumatologist, you're not only treating certain types of patients, but you're also very good at chronic disease management. You're very good um, at chronic pain management, uh, functional capacity. You're good at understanding biologics. You're good. You probably have an understanding of how an infusion center works. All of this is knowledge and expertise that you have that somebody may want to seek out and you want to connect with those individuals. And by putting your profile on a place like Upwork, you're going to be discoverable. And for me, I charge about $150 an hour. And I think you could easily do the same or maybe start a little bit lower at about $100 an hour and work your way up. Other websites I like are Fiverr. On Fiverr, I have def different gigs uh, that I have put up. So for example, uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm not sure if it's going to come up under there, but... Um, yeah, it's always difficult to find your gigs on uh, Fiverr. But anyway, so on Fiverr, I have different gigs where I write resumes for physicians, but I also do clinical review and proofreading of articles. So that's really wonderful. If somebody wants to uh, send me something, I'll review it. Um, it's something I started more recently. I had a previous profile um, that I deleted where I made a lot more steady income. So it just kind of depends on what it is that you like doing. And you can also find a lot of remote jobs on LinkedIn. If you go on linkedin.com, you go to jobs, uh, you can find a lot of remote uh, job opportunities. But one thing that I always recommend to people is, you know, try to try to build your profile on a place like LinkedIn, really make it a beautiful profile where somebody can search you, find stuff about you, read about you, and maybe even, uh, you know, reach out to you and want to collaborate with you. Because if you publish content regularly on websites like LinkedIn, chances are people are going to find you and they're going to they're going to want to work with you. And I think that's kind of the key. Uh, Indeed is another great website. Now, this one is the <laughs> Spanish one, but obviously the, the US one is the one you'd be looking for. And so you can uh, type in things that you want to do. For example, you can type in just rheumatology and remote and you might find somebody who's looking for a rheumatologist who is going to do utilization management review, right? Just reviewing um, medical decisions in, in the insurance space and signing off on it. Or maybe they want to consult with a rheumatologist on the development of a new product. And so that's the piece that you have to figure out. What is it that you want to do? If you want to be a consultant, what expertise do you have? What are you really good at? What do you like? What do you know about? And then just kind of develop each one of these things. Honestly, if you're going to do this and you're serious about it, I do think the best thing that you could do is probably <laughs> have a session with me. I charge $150 uh, per session for every 30 minute session, actually. And I can brainstorm with you and you can tell me exactly what it is that you want to do. So that's kind of uh, what a lot of physicians have done. Many oncologists have met with me and decided, like, what is it that I can pursue? What is it that I can do as a remote doctor? Um, in order for me to make money, like, can I sell courses? Can I do this? Can I do that? And so courses, in fact, are a great place for you to be able to make money. Um, this one we don't need. Healthcare startups. Okay, so I mentioned how I wanted to write healthcare startups because there's many websites like Crunchbase and uh, Angel Investors, etc., where, where they list all the most popular um, healthcare startups, which have recently gone through some investment funding. And the reason this is a good place to start is because if you click on these websites, then you kind of understand who they are and what money they raise and what are they about and what are they doing? Like, I know, I know this one because, um, the, the guy who started, I know him, uh, Miga is going to be a cardiology, uh, website. So if you're a cardiologist, for example, reading this is great because you can read, you can go to megahealth.com and you can literally reach out to them and say, hey, I'm a cardiologist. You are starting a heart health website. I would love 
to help you to build something really incredible. Um, so this is Jared. <clears throat> I know him pretty well, Dre. Um, so you can just say, All right, I want to be your medical director uh, and I'll be your remote medical director. Um, or uh, maybe you're, uh, you're, you're interested in something else. You're interested in being um, just a consultant for them. Maybe they're creating a product and you reach out to them and you say, hey, I like what you're thinking about, but I wanted to just pick your brain and see what maybe there are some other opportunities that uh, you, you're overlooking that you haven't considered. Believe me, I do that. And I know it seems like pretentious to reach out to a company and say, hey, maybe there's something you haven't thought about. But honestly, I think um, these guys are passionate about that. They, they want to create something really long lasting. And the, the reason I also brought up this website is uh, because I create a lot of digital products. I, this course that you're taking right now is a course that I created for someone who's going to benefit from my knowledge. So you can sell digital pro products like this, like courses for patients, how to deal with fibromyalgia, how to manage your lupus, how to manage uh, exercise and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, you know, what, what things to look for when you get biologics, you know, what are the, what are the benefits and uh, side effects of, of biologics? These are great little courses that you can put together super easy the way I'm doing it with screen sharing and you can sell it to patients. You just simply create a website for it. You advertise it and it's a wonderful revenue, uh, revenue stream. If you are looking to reach out to other rheumatologists, there's a, this is an also a wonderful way to make some income. For example, you are abroad and there are private rheumatology practices who need rheumatologists who can cover their practice every once in a while. So one option would be to create a good website for yourself. You can go to a website like this, where you basically can look up all of the different, let's say rheumatologists in Northeast Florida, in the Elkton, Florida area. And you can see here are all the different rheumatologists in this neighborhood. And so guess what? You can reach out to them. You can send a letter to their office <clears throat> and you can say, hey, I'm a rheumatologist. I'm currently traveling. I'm happy to offer you some cross coverage with some of your patients. Uh, for example, if somebody is out sick or you need some basic follow up for someone and you just need me to log into your electronic health record or reach out to the patient, I'm happy to do that. So that's another way for you to kind of do it on your own, to reach out to these telemedicine, to, to, to reach out to these practices yourself and offer your, uh, offer your services to them. I've already kind of gone over the uh, Numbeo website. I think really, really understanding that you don't need a lot of money to live in these countries is really important. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch up on is technology. Honestly, this day and age, you can just get away with a Chromebook. That's all you need. It's a great laptop. Um, and you can do voice dictation down here. If you see my mouse, uh, if I just click this, I can uh, dictate anything. I don't have to type anything out. And that's great for telemedicine visits, for my consulting stuff when I <clears throat> want to send a note to a client. And it's a uh, it's very good on battery. It lasts a long time. And you can see here, it can turn, turns into a tablet, which is really helpful when you want to uh, take a bunch of notes. And I just pair that along with some simple headphones. So the one I just showed you was a, the Asus Chromebook Flip C433, which is a very popular one. It's been popular for many, many years. And I also really, really like these headphones. Uh, which I last purchased in 2021. Uh, and these are really great for uh, doing voice calls, right? Um, it's a really good way for you to be able to connect with people. Um, another thing I really recommend before you leave the US is to get either a uh, Google Fi uh, phone number so that you can make calls all over the world with your US phone number. You can learn a lot uh, by going on the Google Fi website. Um, <clears throat> alternatively, you could do, you can get a Google voice number while you're still in the U S you basically get uh, a phone number through the U S and with that one, once you download this app, the Google voice app, you can actually call to the U S for free and you can get calls from the U S for free. So it's really wonderful. You basically can be anywhere in the world and you can still get calls as if you are in the U S and nobody will know any better. And that's going to be great for your privacy. Now, I could talk a little bit more about all the different things that you can do when, as a rheumatologist, and trying to make money remotely, trying to be a digital nomad. But 
it wouldn't be very helpful if I don't know what it is that you like to do, what it is you're passionate about. And probably one of the best ways for you to figure that out is to go on LinkedIn and go on the jobs and type in. So I go up here and I type in rheumatologist. Well, there we go. <laughs> Usually is much more streamlined than that, but that's the way I use the voice dictation. And you can see here, they're just looking for a rheumatologist. Here, they're looking for some clinical research, cancer lead, academic rheumatologist, um, and pediatric rheumatologist. The reason I say look at this is because you will see that a lot of different companies are looking for rheumatologists for many different things. Here's one that uh, they're looking for a telehealth rheumatologist. Um, also, just Google Google the word rheumatology and rheumatologist and um, understand what people are doing with their expertise. Go on uh, websites like LinkedIn and look up look for uh, rheumatologist, not as a job, but look at actual people. And the reason you want to look at people is you want to see what these people are doing. So when I look at someone like this, it looks like they're just a regular old rheumatologist, but some of these other people, you'll, you'll see that their uh, description, actually they're doing really fascinating stuff in this space. And you can imitate a lot of that and copy that. So get, again, it kind of depends on what it is that you're interested in doing. Um, that's kind of, that's going to be the key, but I gave you some wonderful resources for where to go to look at all the different opportunities. You can create products for patients, you can create products for physicians. It all depends on what it is you're passionate about. And that's gonna be your journey into being a digital nomad physician. Now, with this course that you purchased, you have unlimited access to me. You can email me drmo at digitalnomadphysician.com. That's, uh, that's Dr. Mo at digitalnomadphysician.com. Or you can always go to my website, you can go to the me section up here on the right. You actually, it's a really good place for, to get to know what, it, how I got to where I got, like all about my, the path that I took to uh, get to my digital nomad uh, career. And then you can just create um, uh, an email. Um, just uh, send me an email and I'm happy to connect with you. I hope this was helpful. I hope this is a good way for you to learn a little bit more about me and get some ideas about how to start your a journey on being a digital nomad physician rheumatologist. Take care.